So welcome everybody. This is the uh, first meeting of this uh, September month. So uh, my usual idea was uh, every first meeting uh, will be an open session where people can ask any uh, questions and uh, subsequent uh, three or four uh, sessions uh, will be a particular topic and we'll discuss within that topic. So today is uh, one of those uh, open sessions where you can ask any question uh, regarding photography and we'll try to answer best of our abilities. So um, I don't have any intro as such. So you can ask any questions uh, uh, which come to your mind and uh, I'll be glad to answer. Kukum, I think you can, you can start. Sir, you have assumed that I'll come always with a question. Huh? Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's a good assumption. Kunkum, it's not an assumption. It's a known fact. Okay, I wanted to pick the question on the thread, the whatever is coming, but let me do the starting. Uh, yeah, how to how to understand, uh, again, coming back to the mirrorless concept, uh, Dr. Uh, and Girish. Uh, so they say, I know they, it has a lot to do with the elements and other things. So is it is it a plain uh, fact that whatever lenses that are prepared today are better than the lenses of the past or it is still subject to the lens construction and other details like can it can we just blindly say that whatever whatever lens that comes new for the same aperture for the same focal length would be better than the same aperture and same focal length of the olden days i mean not very far maybe three to five years back in time okay. any perspective on that yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I have to make this I, question. This was a rough question no, no, in my mind. No, no. The, this, this, this is a fantastic question because there are a lot of uh, answers for this. Uh, the reason is, I, I, I was again perplexed with this particular idea that the newer lenses are coming out so fast and uh, so efficient and uh, so cheap compared to uh, the, uh, the earlier uh, type of lenses. Cheap in the sense, I'm not going for those company-made lenses. They are always expensive. I'm talking about the third party lenses, the, the Chinese manufacturers who are doing it. Lavawa from the Venus is one. And uh, then you have uh, uh, seven artisans are the others. Then uh, you, you uh, we already had uh, German manufacturers who used to make excellent lenses. And now these uh, Chinese guys are churning out lenses like, like mad. And the quality is on par with the, uh, the company made lenses. And even the, the third party lenses, for example, uh, Tamron and uh, Sigma. Sigma at one point really uh, uh, was ruling with their art lenses. But when the Tamron came into the picture, it came out with the better lens because art lens was very expensive uh, while being exclusively uh, sharp. Now, uh, Tamron also came up with a similarly uh, great lens, but not so expensive. So you had a great lens with the cheap price. So that's where uh, these things but having said that there's something i miss with these mo modern day lenses everything is sharp and unfortunately that's not what most people uh, who are photographically inclined really look for you know there is no character in that lens that uh, that particular look see for example people go for these lenses like a wide lander people go for leica cameras and and uh, their lenses is for a character of their own when you shoot in that particular thing there is there is a particular look what you get which is impossible to get from uh, uh, cameras which sony makes or cameras which uh, uh, extremely sharp uh, 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 optical elements makes now why is it cheaper why is it uh, better cheaper because you know they are using uh, robots and computers to really manufacture and polish these lenses the second thing is the materials have improved. The glass material and the technology has improved quite a lot. And we, we know much better optics now than uh, which used to be happening earlier. So optical engineering has really go, grown so much that we are getting uh, fantastic results. So all they have to do is just feed uh, the parameters and then the, the uh, computer will produce a lens formula which you can actually do it. Earlier, it used to be the way like you have a formula, then create those lenses, grind those lenses, come to uh, that particular uh, point, 
then do the test keep on repeatedly do the test until you get the formula right now all this can be uh, computerized and uh, then you can get the results so that's why uh, we are getting much better uh, lenses compared to the good old days and uh, having said that if you are looking for a sharpness only go for the present day lenses if you are looking for quality go for the older lenses i think that answers your question kukum uh, that's it prishi uh, on on one hand we are basically looking at when we talk about lenses and you know we are basically talking about the technical aspect of photography in yeah. terms of the aesthetics of photography uh yeah. i think the challenges or the you know the the approaches uh remain the same uh, or do you think there has been a, a significant shift uh, in that area also no there has been significant shift because of how we perceive the photograph as a end results for example uh in the film days or or in the earlier days uh, having uh, chromatic aberrations was almost uh, accepted so if you don't have a chromatic aberration then then you are uh, not in that league at all and in fact that was considered as a sort of a beauty in in those days uh, uh, the and we, we were not obsessed with the bokeh as as we are doing now you know even a small type of bokeh uh, people condemn that particular lens in such a way you know there are there are few lenses which give you a Uh, a wada like buffet or a donut buffet for uh, english speaking guys for uh, indians it's wada so that sort of buffet yes. is, is is really condemned so but those are lens characteristics and those lenses sometimes make those characteristics in in a particular way so you are shooting in a, a particular lens for example i have a 43 mm wigelander lens which is a manual lens which i use on sony uh i after using that particular lens because because it's got its own characteristic look it's got a very fine vignette which comes in uh, and um, it's opens at uh, uh, 43 mm it's 1.2 so when i open that 1.2 the blur is fabulous and the bokeh is so smooth so it's it's like you know when you make a dish uh, and and when you try to taste and then you tell you know exactly what what your uh, what you are tasting or what you are uh, this thing it's very difficult to explain it but but there is there is something you know uh, you can feel so i think uh, the lenses are like something like that they are not uniform and in fact batch wise uh, previously there used to be a lot of variations that's where the third party companies really went down because when you buy a sigma or a tamron uh, in earlier days during the uh, uh, dslr era each batch had a variation so that is because you know it was not computerized it was not made uh, in batches uh, uh, present day it's all robotized so everything is you know made by a robot so there there is no absolutely no uh, chance of uh, variation or or even there is a variation it's very minor so you have a good quality lenses coming out um, so uh, doctor on, on follow up question on that two follow up sure sure sure, sure, sure. sorry no problem yeah uh, one is they i again it is something i've read maybe slightly i've experienced the okay the old d d lenses from the nikon the yes. film days lenses yes. right hmm. i have felt it has a little added added green tint to it that yes. is yes. question number 1 hmm. uh question number 2 uh, is uh, i forgot uh, what was yeah for the sigma using the dog can we make it bring uh, is it possible possible that we could come make the lens come back to the consistent grade or it the dock will not help okay the sigma dock that the dock dock part first so the dock really helps you to adjust the focus point so if your uh, if your lens is not focusing exactly where you want to be uh that micro focus adjustment can be corrected with the dock so the dock has its advantages uh, uh not to be ignored now coming to the green tint yeah that was because of the the glass they used so that green tint in most of the d lens, uh, series of lenses uh, is there 
and uh, film guys used to like it because they used to it used to give them that that particular uh, feel and nowadays you know uh, the, these guys go for a, a, a log uh, uh, type of uh, shooting and uh, they do a color correction on their own uh, for them it's a burden because if they use this lens along with some other lens non d lenses then i think uh, you will get uh, this uh, uh, the same issue no no i am i am liking green i am not against it but i wanted to confirm that understanding that lens is bringing it yes yes lens bring it so those are the characteristics of lenses i mean when i have explained about the beauty of each of the lenses it's basically that thanks doctor both okay. both the questions are answered okay thank you so other questions girish you can ask or uh, all others who have come uh, uh if there is anybody in the audience who would like to ask a question please raise your hand i'll bring you up and you can ask the questions otherwise uh, to take uh, the uh, the the conversation forward uh krishi the other uh, uh, issue that we generally talk about is the uh, you know in terms of the subjectivity in, uh, when it comes to aesthetics hmm. so how does one actually uh get to know uh what kind of uh, you know uh, things to look for when you're you know looking at an image or evaluating an image it's a tough question the reason is aesthetics itself is uh, sort of not understood completely by everybody or anybody so how do you really appreciate your aesthetics is depending on your exposure to varied Uh, type of uh, pictures very type of arts and you slowly develop that particular thing there is no fixed rule that this is to be i mean uh, we try to do rules but the rules are meant to be broken so in such a case it's better to uh, go by the gut feeling so that aesthetic part is basically it's a gut feeling so if you like it it's yours or you start over years of uh, experience you start to develop a particular way of uh, either post processing or showing the picture cropping the picture uh, presenting the picture so all these are a part of that part of that the whole repertoire and overnight you won't get that particular uh, aesthetic part of it and even people who define these aesthetics for example we have you know so called masters in in particular field uh, they try to compartmentalize just to teach others but they themselves wouldn't have learnt uh, the aesthetics in that particular way so it's 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 very difficult so i think uh, go by the gut feeling if a picture gives you that that feeling okay you have done that or uh, the other trick which uh, uh, what i usually tell you know how to choose the best picture among your Uh, whole set of pictures is uh, call few few good friends and ask them to look through the picture if they stop at one of those pictures and you know ponder a little more uh, or they get confused with uh, you know what you have uh, created then i think that's a better picture than than what you have chosen and many a times you yourself will be a bad judge in trying to choose uh, uh, aesthetically good picture among your selection you will be better judge to choose somebody else's collection because uh, your way of interpreting it is slightly different from the the person who created that picture uh, evaluating it because a person who creates a picture also gets lot of other inputs for example he knows the situation where he has to do, create that particular Im image he has to go through that all that tough this thing he has to choose that particular lens to capture that particular image and the trouble which he went through probably he took hundreds of pictures and one of them really came out well so his impression and your impression and what he wanted to tell in that particular picture uh, probably is only understood by him so it's it's a it's a complicated uh, answer but i think somewhere you might find a glimpse of what i wanted to tell uh, in fact that's a very uh, fantastic point you brought up <clears throat> in terms of you know uh the third person always being a better judge of your images than yourself uh so uh, just to uh, take it forward 
uh, one of the things you mentioned is gut feeling. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, what happens with gut feeling is when we, I mean, when we generally talk about gut feeling, is we are talking about what the subconscious mind is telling us. Uh, but more often than not, what uh, gen- uh, what really happens is that your conscious mind takes over and overrides whatever your subconscious mind is uh, telling you, and that is where the gut feeling could be very misleading. Uh, you know, uh, so what is your uh, take on that? Yeah, it happens. It happens many a times. I uh, I tend to you know when I uh, import files uh, from uh, from the camera through using Lightroom. I, I feel some of those pictures are not good enough. So I just uh, try to you know rank them or I don't really de- uh, uh, give... See, uh, my, my routine is something like this. When I import, I give uh, three for those which are good and four which I think are very good when I, when I import. So sometimes in some of those threes, I might get a four later. So that initial feeling uh, is one thing. The second thing is I don't import them immediately. I usually make them wait. Uh, they, they'll be uh, in the card or even if it's imported into the computer, I don't look at it, look at them at immediately and the sorting happens later. So uh, during the sorting, uh, I would get a different sort of idea from wh- how I got from when I captured it. So this is my personal routine. I don't think you know it's, it's uh, uh, feasible for others. But I think it's a uh, it's worth trying because uh, the same image which I thought was bad when I when I sit together I, I get some some feeling some uh, feeling so that is where the the first gut feeling was different from the second gut feeling so I'm talking about uh, you know um, gut feeling word is basically uh, for me it's like leaving out all the formulas like rule of thirds, diagonal lines, and these, that, all those things. Leaving out that, when you look at the picture, if you get a feeling that, you know, it's it's your creation. It may be raw, but it's your creation. And that's what I feel is my gut feeling. Yeah, I mean, that is that is exactly what uh, we are supposed to look for when we say gut feel. Uh, you know, and that, that's the reason I brought this up because generally uh, I have seen a tendency uh, for people to, uh, you know, listen to the conscious words rather than the subconscious uh, yeah. words, yeah. you know, so I, I, that, that, that definitely answers my question. Yeah, uh, most of the time I try to get away from the conscious part, you know, that lines and rules of uh, uh, composition that happens only when I'm clicking, not when I'm uh, trying to you know, sorting out the pictures. True, true. Kumkum, any Kumkum, other you have any other questions? I know I'm good for today. There are many more uh, Wednesday sessions to come. Let me not use all of <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it's only the first Wednesday you get a chance to, you know, fire me as much as possible. The other days it will be uh, topic wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't ask her of questions, uh, doctor. I think the question that I, I wanted to ask, you already prompted me. So I asked it. That, that's good for today. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for the answers, doctor. Balik, ma'am. Naren. I am audible. I think you could be. Yeah, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, one of the things uh, regarding the uh, image we made hmm. is a emotional bond we may have while making the Im- image, which may be yeah. lost after some time. As you yes. said, you look at it for the second time, third time. That yes. emotional emotional bond would be lost. Exactly. Initially, yeah. when we make a picture. Maybe we are too involved in that, and when we uh, look look at the imported picture, we perceive it as a good photo, which later, on second thought, may not be such a good photo, and vice exactly. versa. Exactly. So this emotional bond is a really uh, uh, bad for you know creative photographer, because uh, when you start getting stuck, uh, getting in love with your picture, then you can't see the bad points of that particular picture, and 
when you don't see the bad points you promote that picture or try to edit that picture in such a way uh, that you 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 try to get something out of uh, you know that particular picture but overall uh, when you try to put all these different works of yours together then you see that that uh, that bad picture which you you fell in love and uh, try to bring it up that falls apart so that's why the emotionally you shouldn't get uh, bound with that that particular creation of yours Umesh sir, any questions? Naren? Vranda, any questions? So another question that I have, uh, Krishi, mm. uh, is generally we uh, see advice uh, from established photographers saying, you know, uh, a newcomer should actually identify uh, the genre that he wants to pursue and just stick to that. Uh, okay. But I'm of the belief that it is better to actually try out as many genres as possible and then concentrate on one, but at the same time without actually letting go of the other genres because I believe each genre has its own uh, uniqueness and it teaches you uh, to learn about the other genres and uh, whatever favorite genre you have picked uh, you know it, it uh, the uh, having interest in other genres can actually help you excel in that particular genre you have picked as your favorite yeah I perfectly agree with that uh, that statement uh, one of the reason is uh, if you're if you're starting for the first time uh, in photography, you won't be knowing about genres and uh, uh, what you may be inclined may be different from what you are pursuing. So uh, that's where the conflict comes later, not initially, but later. Uh, I have seen a lot of people who took one of the genres and concentrated on, uh, on it, uh, try to excel it. I mean, that's, that's a advice what you get in most of the YouTube uh, masters. Uh, but if you don't know the other genres, you don't know the uh, the positive part of those genres uh, which contribute to your main genre. For example, macro will give you some insights, uh, architecture will give you some other insights, uh, uh, landscape will give you different insights. Uh, so all these insights can be used to get what you want in your genre which you chose later. So jump into the water try to swim as ba as much as possible and then find out you know uh, which uh, we, whether backstroke uh, is what you like or uh, uh, other style so uh, i think it's better to try all the different genres try and uh, fail and then then get get uh, benefit out of it so but it's worthwhile to try uh, several genres I mean, at least the genres you can try you know there are a few genres which may be you know uh, extremely difficult for you to try but but at least those uh, few genres uh, should be tried and only then you pick which one you choose best i mean which one really gives you a pleasure yeah thank you krishi uh Runa Madam, do you have any questions for uh, Krishman sir? No, I think. Umesh, any questions?
Girish, I think you should come with some more questions. <laughs> <laughs> I can come up. I can keep coming up with questions of yeah, yeah, the whole keep, session. Keep up. But I would what like others is... also to, you know. Yeah, uh, fine, fine. But uh, we are not getting yeah. an enterprising uh, yeah. audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the the next question that uh, I I would like to uh, you know pick on is, uh, so when we talk about uh, the choice of lenses, basically, you know. Uh, you know let's say uh, let's pick a particular genre let's say street photography hmm. uh generally we tend to uh, hear from the so called established photographers that okay you should use this particular 35 mm lens or a 50 mm lens you know something like that where, where they have a preconceived notion of what lens actually uh, suits a particular genre what is your take on this yeah this exactly comes with the the you know uh, exclusion like the earlier question where you asked about the genres don't try other genres don't just try one genre and keep sticking with it the same thing applies to <laughs> yeah. the lenses also uh, don't try other lenses uh, for street only 35 mm you will be only going with the 35 mm i i disagree with that because uh, lenses give you a particular feel of how you see the world around as a as a photographer how you see the world alone by putting a barrier that you should see only in wide angle view not uh, with the tele lens you can see the uh, world uh, around in any of the lenses so lenses what they do is they frame your picture that's all and they change the aspect ratio between the foreground and the background so you to tell a story of that particular genre only these lenses are possible see uh, take landscape for example A lot of people say that you know landscape can only be done with the wide angle lens but we all know that you know going for the tele lens especially in a mountainous area where you have a vast uh, mountains uh, um, in front of you will compress those mountains and give you that fantastic feeling of of being uh, close to the that nature and as well as that that vastness which is in front of you the same thing applies to portrait i mean people are obsessed with this portrait lens concept that 85 mm or 135 mm 100 mm or 50 mm which which lens really this thing portrait is nothing to do with the lens it's portrait uh, genre is basically to tell a story of the subject in your words period that's all so uh, whether you tell it with the 35 mm story whether you tell it at the 50 mm story whether you tell it at uh, show, uh, holding a 800 mm and doing a portrait still you can do so overall the whole idea of you know uh, telling this uh, uh, restricting this to a particular lens it's it's a, it's a fad it's because that person is stuck with that lens and many a times people have a handicap with the lenses in the sense they are so used to a particular lens they can't use any other lens so they start promoting that particular lens as their uh, uh, the, the end all for that particular genre i feel you should try all the different lenses and choose one which you are uh, happy with the end result is more important than the tool i completely agree with that uh, i mean uh, so uh, you know just just uh, taking this a step forward uh, the uh, you know you said uh, you choose the lens that uh, that you're happy with ha having tried all the different lenses uh, so here uh, what i feel is that understanding the kind of pictures uh, that can be made given a particular lens is very important for example uh, you know uh, we have uh, so many uh, situations where for example let's say a person wants to go uh, wildlife uh, for, for for wildlife photography he will rent the lens just before going for the trip yeah. and come back and he will say oh i'm not happy with this uh, you know yeah. uh, images that i've made uh, and you know probably end up uh, blaming either the camera or the lens or the situation or whatever exactly but it all boils down to having the ability to understand what kind of pictures can be made from a particular lens so what do you say about that yeah we, it takes years to master a lens because uh, once uh, once you start using the particular lens for example uh, i myself uh, hardly use 50 mm range 
either I go for the wide or I go for the tele. So skipping out that 24 to 70 range. How I realized that, um, that is, you know, when I had whole range of lenses, I later checked putting all my photos on Lightroom and checking out, you know, which lenses uh, uh, I used for uh, which amount of time. So then I realized that 24 to 70 range, I, I really uh, hardly used. So for one year, I tried just using that 2470 and leaving out all the other lenses just to get me used to that particular thing. So you have to, you know, start using it. And your example, uh, anybody who go, who goes to a wildlife safari, hiring a lens just the day before, he's going to waste his time. He might as well look through uh, binocular and enjoy that particular uh, uh, safari than uh, <laughs> wasting with, you know, paying the rent for that particular lens and trying to capture using that lens. So true. I, I mean, uh, the uh, if, if, if there's a particular mindset attached to every lens because each lens, uh, you know, gives different results. So when you're not uh, comfortable with what or when you're not aware of what a lens can do, uh, you generally tend to think, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the mindset of the other lenses that you've been using for a long time. And it generally, uh, I mean, it definitely leads to disappointment at the end of it. Exactly. So, completely agree with we'll that. We'll ask others uh, to... Uh, uh, I, please raise your hands if you have a question. Uh, they're all scared of you, Krishi. They don't want to ask questions. I'm giving such nice answers. Why, why, why are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> please, please ask questions. <laughs> please, please I, come ahead. Ah, uh, Dheeraj. No, no, I <laughs> no question, so to say, but uh, I've had this uh, a bit of discussion also with uh, uh, Girish so many times. I use an uh, I use a 35, which is a little better than an ordinary kit lens, mm -hmm. but somehow uh, I have been the most comfortable with it. In you know, in uh, we've had the, like wherever I've taken it and gone, including landscape, including. Uh, uh, portraits I've been using that lens, and exactly. I've, I've I've gotten to a level of comfort with it. Now, when I if I need to see another, uh, to pick another lens and then choose uh, a different dimension or different perspective, then that's that's again. But like you said, you need to master the lens, and also I'm not because of my comfort level with the lens. I haven't I haven't moved to another lens in in about two two and a half years. And okay. I'm I, today it's uh, it's very. It's a free flow whenever I am clicking when I'm using that lens. Yeah, exactly. When that's that's how you have to get used to your your camera and that tool. See, the camera at the end of the day is just a tool. It's like your like your fingers. So uh, uh, you have to get used to it so that even blindfolded you will be able to uh, use that lens and get the results. So right. uh, middle of the night, uh, say two three o'clock, totally dark. If somebody asks. Okay, uh, I'm just going to put a brief light on the subject. Uh, all you have to do is, you know, just take your camera and shoot and get, get me the results. You should be able to do that. So not fumble around. You know, when the action happens really in front of you, uh, most of right. the time we, we fumble around. And each time we get a new lens, uh, the same thing, same thing happens. You know, uh, yesterday I was shooting with the, uh, the new Zoom, which is 100-400. And um, I was happily clicking and then I realized... I was clicking at 1 30th of a second at a 800 mm focal length. Obviously, everything was blur. So, so uh, a new tool always you keep on uh, uh, adjusting and, uh, you know, get to that particular uh, finest where, you know, you shouldn't be conscious while you're, you're clicking. So for that, you uh, stick with the lens until it dies by another same lens. <laughs> Any other questions from others? Please Dhirubhai, if you have hands. any other questions, you're most welcome to ask. Uh, lenses, uh, lenses for different genres, like street photography. Uh, obviously, it is artist perspective, but street photography, if you use, uh, let's say, wide angle, hmm. 
do you get uh, uh, how do you uh, okay how do you think uh, the things you want to yeah, use basically yeah. uh, wh- no wide angle can give you that particular look uh, which you are looking for you know j- uh, one of the genres of street photography is a juxtaposition where you ha- you put a subject against uh, something which is you know totally against that subject so okay. for example uh, uh, a jewelry advertisement below that you have a beggar so that sort of uh, that, that's a very cliche subject but that's that's mm-hmm. an example which just came into my mind so in such a case okay. uh, wide angle really works or if you are trying to do some uh, some sort of light and shadow effect with the with the group of people which is happening simultaneously that's where the uh, the wide mm-hmm. angle works but wide angle to a certain extent i think i think for a street i think 35 is a, is a sort of a, a sweet spot for most people who are trying to take take that sort of uh, uh, picture so uh, okay wider than that then it tries to put too many uh, uh, subjects into uh, not a subjects too many point of interest into the uh, picture and that that gives you a, a sort of a cluttered end result okay got it so i think uh, your your approach is the best one so you concentrate on you know what you feel like uh, get your get your subject where you want and then click okay but even in uh, street photography there are various other genres which are sub genres of this street photography and in some of them it works not all of them that's why uh, telling you know only this lens works for this genre that that's really a wrong idea try all the lenses and find which one is comfortable with you comfortable uh, you, uh, with your way of working see at the end right. of the day it's like a hammer so you can have a huge hammer like a, like the one thor uses only thor can uh, lift it or a hammer which you can use uh, the, the uh, that's 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 a very good uh, uh, analogy for for this thing. so shrikan sir any questions Viraj, any more questions from you? Any any other questions? Uh, uh, I'm trying to get some in mind. Sure, sure, sure. Others can ask questions during that time. Or Girish, if nobody else. Yeah, I'm I'm the question man, Krishi. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of questions. <laughs> Questionable Girish. So yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the other the, the other uh, uh, topic which uh, you know generally uh, makes me uh, think a lot is the uh, accessories in terms of let's say uh, the the filters you know mm. if I have to pick one of the uh, many accessories that we use mm. uh, the the very fact that uh, you know we use very less uh, you know of those uh, accessories uh, when we go out to shoot. there is a certain amount of confusion or there is a certain amount of uh, you know uh, 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 you know what to say i mean b- basically you start wondering you start fumbling uh, mm-hmm. on, on how to get it work uh, apart from uh, you know uh, re- using it repeatedly uh, mm-hmm. what do you think would be a best approach to uh, pick the right kind of accessory i mean i just picked one of uh, filters uh but we have other accessories like your you know uh, tripods or your monopods or your uh, you know uh, on camera flashes or you know, off camera flashes and so on and so forth your modifiers and all these things you know so many accessories are available to us how does one generally arrive at which is the best accessory to pick okay uh the the biggest part of this this particular equation is this there are there is a huge industry trying to market you uh, so many accessories which you many a times don't need you don't need the, that particular accessory but they will market you in such a way that you know that that's a must have one of the best i uh, example i can give you is a uv filter almost every times you go and buy a, a camera or a lens they will say that you know you want to have a uv filter fitted in front of you 
and obviously you'll spend about thousand rupees or uh, four, uh, two thousand three thousand rupees uh, spending on on a very so called very expensive uv filter which practically for uh, any purpose is a useless uh, tool as far as the digital camera is concerned whether it's a dslr or a mirrorless uh, in film days yes uv filters had the uh, this thing because the film was sensitive to uv rays now uh, you have the front of the lens which is hardened glass so you don't really require any filter in front of it but more uh, nobody really sells you a lens cap sorry lens hood lens hood some of the companies give you a lens hood when you buy the expensive lens but when you go buy the buy that kit lens they don't give you that lens hood lens hood uh, reduces the flare much better and uh, protects your front of the lens much better than uh, the filters so again you have to be very careful about uh, the number of accessories uh, you will buy otherwise you will be spending a lot of money on a useless accessories and uh, monopod is another example of that sort of accessory monopod as such is a totally useless accessory other than for uh, wildlife photographers who are carrying those uh, above 300 400 mm lenses or sports photographers who constantly try to you know uh, move, move the camera and they are sitting in a position and uh, using monopod so these are the only two guys who really require monopod but i see lot of people who will be carrying a monopod along with the tripod luckily there are few tripods which can be made into a monopod so in case you want to become a, uh, make it into a monopod you just uh, pluck out one of the legs and then make it into a monopod i prefer that sort of thing where you have two in one sort of options uh what i get about this, any... which one sir which one what about yeah. nd filters sir yeah nd filters are useful uh, if you how are do you to pick? do yeah how, how do, do you pick, pick what is okay. uh, what yeah uh, because uh, i have been yeah. wanting to pick an nd filter from the longest time yeah. i am still at see what to take <laughs> girish just picked up uh, nd filter set from me so uh, that's why he uh, is asking this question but anyway uh, the nd filters i think we'll have a, another session uh, probably the next session we can put it as a how to do nd filters and why do you need nd filters but nd filters okay there are two types one is a screwable filters another is a square filter screwable filters have got their own disadvantages but the price wise they are cheaper you can just buy a filter and you uh, need okay. uh, basically two uh, two filters uh, three stop and uh, six stop so that's all what is required no need to buy three stop and six stop three stop and six stop so three okay. stop will cut three stops of light three f stops of light okay. and six stop right. will cut six f stops of light and when you combine it will cut nine uh, f stops of light three plus six so those two filters are sufficient yeah those two filters and polarizing filter okay polarizing will cut another one and a half to uh, two stops you know it depends on the polarizer one and a half to two stops so overall you get 10 stop of filter and you don't need one single 10 stop filter you can combine all of them and make it into a 10 stop filter having said that a uh, problem with the circular filter is that you can screw it up nicely but once you screw up something like a six stop filter your viewfinder will go, do, go totally dark so you won't be able to see anything so if okay. you missed uh, focus or when you screwed the filter your focus moved slightly you will get blurry ah. pictures throughout because you so won't be able where, to see it yeah this is where the square filters come in square filters allow you to slide in the uh, you you finish off the, all the focusing composition everything and then just slide that particular filter in the slot in front of it so uh, it comes in 100 mm and 150 mm and that is what i advise people to go instead of going for the Uh, screw in filters because if you are uh, if you want long duration landscape photographs finally you'll curse yourself for buying that the screwing fil filters because the problem i told you about uh, the focusing part so right might as well invest better and go for the uh, the square filters there are a lot okay. of cheap filters available in the market uh, you go to amazon you'll get uh, filters for about 1000 rupees but they are, they will shatter in a day or two or if it is a uh, sort of a plastic type they will scratch it in few days so you need hard glass filters which don't shatter as well as don't scratch 
So there are quite a few companies. Haida is one of those which is reasonable. Nisi is another one. And if you want some Rolls Royce type of filters, you have uh, uh, Lee filters are there, BMW is there, Breakthrough is there. So these are the few companies which, which make these filters. So you can go any one of them. My favorite is Haida because it's uh, uh, price as well as performance wise, it's uh, quite good. Okay, right then. The other accessory that actually comes to my mind is uh, Krishi, uh, I mean, uh, the Arsenal. Hmm. This is an uh, though... Yeah. Uh, Sorry? Tell me. To, uh, Krishi yeah. sir, why are you calling yeah. Krishi sir accessory? No, not no, Krishi, Krishi sir is uh, not Arsenal. accessory. <laughs> Arsenal <laughs> is accessory. <laughs> no, no, I <laughs> I'm the main camera, <laughs> not the accessory. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tell so, what, what are you asking, Girishmai? So there's, a, there's this uh, gadget called Arsenal, which is supposed to be an accessory. It's it's an assistant, basically. So it, it does a lot of uh, calculations and gives you the, uh, you know, uh, the settings uh, for you to take a particular kind of picture. Arsenal, so no? It, it's yeah. Arsenal. Arsenal, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, got uh, it. See, it's a, it's one of those uh, things where people really fall for it. I mean, because uh, it's like auto mode in your camera or the PP mode, the professional mode, which calculates everything. No, Arsenal is slightly Correct. better than that. Correct. Uh, it, it gives you a much better calculation. For example, if you go to a sunset, okay, these are the settings you have to do for the sunset. It will tell you the ISO, shutter speed and uh, 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 aperture everything you, what you need to do to get uh, sunset or if you want a sunset with the flash with the friends in front of it it will tell you so uh, it, it, these are all fed into that particular algorithm and uh, that gives you that particular results but having said that that makes you dumb so what really happens is if you don't have arsenal with you then i think uh, uh, you will have problem with uh, with with that particular situation so i feel you should learn how to do things uh, the hard way that is uh, you know learn learn exactly what needs to be done because if arsenal uh, fails in that particular moment you're you're to totally lost because you don't know exactly what to do i've used arsenal okay it's it's quite a good handy tool but i would prefer uh, something like photopills which gives you that direction then uh, making you exactly do that. Photopills gives you, the, you know, it's a fantastic tool for astrophotography. It's a fantastic tool for hyperfocal distance, for finding out when the sunrise, sunset comes, where exact location is. All these things are in that one one app. So uh, if I want to have an app where I want, where I can, uh, you know, check exactly what I want to do, that's probably the, the app uh, I'll pay for not a gadget which will do the same thing what my camera can do. So, I mean, basically, uh, if we look at it, uh, some, uh, something like Arsenal would probably kill your uh, creativity because creativity, it's yes. referring to, uh, you know, you know uh, already clicked images and it won't let you uh, move out of that comfort zone. So, th th that's what I uh, felt about Arsenal. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. It was hyped up, uh, especially uh, during its uh, uh, Kickstarter days. So, uh, and a lot of people purchased uh, purchased it. I, I, I know many of my uh, photography friends who have purchased it. I hardly know anybody who has used it. Yeah, that, that is basically the <laughs> truth. Uh, all those, I mean, everybody who bought it probably used it for a few times and then went back to uh, exactly. doing it manually. Yeah. So does anybody else have a question? Please raise your hands. We have four minutes to nine. You have something to say, Krishi? No, no. Uh, I'm I'm waiting for some questions. Diraj, any other questions from you? Suhas? 
वेलकम एनी क्वेश्चन टोटली वाइट featureless featureless uh, featureless gray or featureless white uh, those right. are the times when when you can replace it now ha- having said that uh, there is a set amount of skies which come with the, you know these luminars uh, even the the latest version of photoshop now has about 150 50 skies which come comes with it so uh, and people tend to use the same sky in their photographs also so make sure that you know you click your own sky so whenever you see a beautiful sky just click a picture and you can incorporate that into luminous uh, uh, the set of skies so that way when you use that particular sky which you have seen uh, or which is native to your place uh, people won't make out you know that's been added by uh, you using one of these softwares so it looks it looks natural so that's one the second thing is look for the shadows in your picture and match the light from the sky so for example if your uh, shadows are falling towards uh, one side right so that means your light is from the left that's why the shadows are falling on the le- right but if a sun is also on the right and the shadows are all on the right then it looks odd so you have to really think about you know placing the sun sun and uh, lumina allows you to move the sun uh, wherever you feel want uh, by moving the uh, sliders there so it's good uh, lumina is a very good competitor to any of the other uh, uh, like uh, lightroom uh, capture one pro and uh, such tools so what what trying out but be selective when you when you want to change the sky okay sir Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Also, to add to that, Krishi, I think one of the uh, other situations where you might not want to replace the sky is if you are submitting uh, the images for competitions. Obviously. Uh, yes. Where there is a very clear, uh, you know, uh, rule that you are not supposed to manipulate images. but if it is just a creative picture which you want to put it on on your wall uh, you want to f- send it to your friends there is no harm in uh, using a sky replacement just to enhance the picture uh, don't make it a very gaudy true, like true. like uh, uh, a sunset picture in every picture what you took yeah, and uh, if your picture has got hard shadows and then the light is very soft then people can make out that you know it's faked so uh it is it is allowed to fake unless you are you are submitting for uh, uh, these contests you are you are allowed to fake at the at the end of the day the photography itself is a art of faking so very true so i think i think it's fine any other questions prem kumar any questions from you anybody we have about 5 minutes so yeah one more question girish <laughs> okay <laughs> um okay the uh, when we uh, you know uh, earlier you were uh, speaking about uh, the portraiture 
where 85 mm is considered the holy grail lens hmm. uh what other focal lens do you think would actually you know uh help you get the kind of images that can wow uh, viewers okay uh that's a good question because uh, you know the question i used to have earlier when before i got into uh, this portrait genre why people are uh, liking that 85 mm lens then i started uh, shooting from various different uh, this thing i started with 35 mm uh, lens for a portrait and then realized okay the nose is slowly getting gr- uh, growing it bigger than than the naturally the subject has then 50 mm 50 mm was fine until you go closer if you are far away then 50 mm is fine but when you go closer 50 mm is not as natural it looks so at 85 mm and uh, the uh, headshots uh, uh, type of portraits uh, was l- you know just in that in fact i would have preferred something close to 135 mm as a as a headshot portrait and uh, uh, sort of two third portrait i think uh, 85 mm is a perfect lens so uh, that's that's how it is now why why this this happens you try to take various uh, pictures using various lenses then you see the the subject as well as the aesthetic which which finally it gives the facial features will start becoming natural at around that that range of using 85 mm or uh, 135 mm in fact 135 mm gives you a much better flatter profile of a subject whereas uh, okay this is uh, again uh, stands on you know how you want to present uh, a model a good looking uh, subject if it is a bad looking subject then the features get exaggerated sometime somebody who has a longer nose obviously get a longer nose when you use a wide angle lens so uh, you can flatten that using uh, uh, longer lenses so uh, my preferred uh, uh, portrait lens is usually the 100 mm uh, ha- or beyond that 100 or 135 100 mm macro is a fantastic uh, 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 portrait lens so uh, it can be done uh, it can be used for both both purposes a lot of people you know don't try to use a macro lens because you can see the pores on the uh, particular person's uh, yeah. skin no that's wrong yeah, uh, the pores are only visible if you are a uh, 6 inches from the subject or 8 inches from the subject minimum focal distance Very that's close. where the macro yeah. really is a macro but if you are away from uh, uh, you know normal shooting distance uh, you won't see the ports sure uh, in fact uh, somewhere i had read that uh, going by the laws of physics 105 mm is what gives you uh, the you know exact Most representation is, of yeah, the exactly. uh, proportions exactly. of the uh, person's face Yes. So anything be, be, uh, you know just below that or just above that is what uh, really makes a good Correct. portrait lens in terms of getting the exact features. Exactly. So uh fine. So I think we can close the session. So, so I think yeah we can uh, yeah, since uh, Girish, there are no questions coming in uh, we can end it for the day. Yeah. so thank you everybody uh, quite a good number of questions but uh, i'm disappointed that you know not many audience i i can see quite a lot of photography sessions going on elsewhere uh, so probably we are, <laughs> we are clashing with that but even there i see the the number of participants are almost similar to this so probably they still uh, got a hangover of krishna janmashtami and the post krishna janmashtami uh, <laughs> festivities so let's call it a day thank you for uh, thank you everybody probably yeah. next week uh, uh, we'll be doing um, uh, nd filters and uh, i think uh, that we'll take that as a topic Fil- filters in specific yeah filters, filters in general in probably yeah filters in general okay right thank you good night everybody see you next right week. thank you everybody good night